What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome back to another weekly watch list video. In this series, my goal is to share with you how I feel about the market conditions and what stocks are at the top of my watch list going into the week ahead. So if you get any value out of that, remember to click the like and subscribe button and let's jump right in. Okay, so this week was a hell of a lot better than last week. That is for sure. We had a nice little bounce back and recovery from the NASDAQ. We are now back above this resistance level. And it was basically Tuesday that set us back up really nicely. So that was great. NASDAQ is doing well. It, it basically traded sideways for the rest of the week, but it was a nice little recovery on the NASDAQ. The S&P 500 is actually doing extremely well within one or 2% of the all time highs and pretty much approaching previous resistance right now. And the Dow Jones, also had an absolutely beautiful week recovering from the 34,500 area all the way up to 35,971 at the close on the week. So beautiful, beautiful recovery from almost all three of our indices. The NASDAQ traded a little sideways towards the end of the week, but really it was a great week. And you can also see that represented in the VIX, also known as the volatility index. And this is basically a graph that shows where prices are expected to be in the future based on options contracts. And it shows you how volatile traders and investors expect the market to be in the future. So when this goes up, people are expecting a lot of uncertainty, a lot of volatility, and probably a market crash. But when it comes back down like this, it's showing that the market has more confidence, there's less volatility, and investors have more confidence and they feel better about putting their money into the market. And so the fact that this came down last week is a very, very good sign. It's very nice to see. And the only piece of really bad news that we got last week was the inflation numbers. And so this is just a headline from CNBC. You can just Google this and, and read more about it. But basically inflation surged 6.8% in November, even more than expected to the fastest rate since 1982. And so basically the announcement and the news was that inflation did not get better in the month of November compared to October and it feels like inflation is still a major concern for a lot of people and this specific piece of information is one of the main reasons that I think Bitcoin had a nice rebound over the last sort of 24 to 48 hours. We were down as low as the kind of 46,000. We're now up to around 49,000, but we're still in a very bearish trend on Bitcoin. I think we personally are going to have a ton of support around 40,000. I don't know for sure if we're going to get to 40,000, but as of right now, we do not have much confirmation of a trend change from this bearish direction that's been established over the last month. So as of right now, Bitcoin is in the bearish direction. We are starting to approach major support of 40,000. We are trading at near the top of this channel here. So we will see how things go over the next few days. But as of right now, Bitcoin is still a little bit bearish. That's okay. I do plan to buy some Bitcoin if we find support here at 40,000. I'm also investing a little bit more money into mining equipment. So I am long-term bullish on Bitcoin. Now, when it comes to COVID, specifically in the US, we had less numbers this week compared to the chart that I showed last week, which is a good sign. However, compared to two or three weeks ago, the numbers are still up. So kind of mixed results when it comes to COVID, not looking absolutely fantastic, but definitely in a state where it is manageable right now. And hopefully we are on the back side of it. Now, here's what earnings look like for this week. As you can see, it's a little bit of a light week. We don't have too many big companies reporting. We got Hexo in the cannabis space, Clean Spark. We've got Adobe on Thursday, FedEx also on Thursday, and Darden on Friday. So Adobe and FedEx are probably the two largest companies there. Okay, now when it comes to Adobe, they not only have earnings coming out on Thursday, but they also have a couple of catalysts for the stock, such as the rise of the metaverse, the rise of creators, the rise of work from home. Everything is going in the right direction for Adobe. They have excellent management. They have great financials, good growth, and it's just a fantastic company. So I really like Adobe. And what I am watching for over the next few weeks here is a breakout of 670. I want to see a breakthrough 670. I'd love to see a breakthrough 700. And if we go to set all time highs, I'm probably going to be buying into Adobe with a trailing stop loss. Next company I want to point out to you here is Apple. I really, really like Apple stock over the long term. It is just something that needs to be part of your portfolio. It makes up 40% of Warren Buffett's portfolio. So it is something that you just need to have because 
it is one of the best stocks that you can hold long term. Now, short term, I'm not saying that it's a great stock to buy this week. It is running pretty heavily right now to all time highs. But what I did tell you was to buy it back here on the dips back in March, April, and May, because Apple is a great stock. If you can buy in on the dips, you can ride it up to the highs. That is exactly what we were seeing right now. And you should have listened to me back then. However, if you're a long-term investor, I think Apple is a good time to buy at any time. And if you're a short-term investor, I would be buying Apple on the next pullback or the next dip, probably to support right here at 150 or 160. So that's what I'd be watching for with Apple. Now, when it comes to Amazon, I really like Amazon because in my opinion, I think this stock has basically been consolidating over the last year. It ran up at the height of COVID because of some of the pressure that COVID was putting on other retailers. People were switching over to Amazon. And then since then, the stock has literally traded sideways for the entire year. And I think that has basically just kind of compressed it and springed it. And I think we are gonna see this thing absolutely explode over the next two to three years because Amazon is absolutely dominating the world of e-commerce, especially in North America. So I am very, very bullish on Amazon. I am adding to my position. I currently have a position in Amazon. And if we see a breakout through 35 and through 38 right here, I'm gonna to add to my position even more because I wanna own Amazon very long term. I like the stock, I like the company, and I am a huge proponent of their business model. Now the next company here is eToro. This is a company that I actually added to earlier in the week. So I made a post in my Discord chat. I let everybody know I actually bought options and I've added some stock to my position there. I am very bullish on eToro. It is in a SPAC merger right now with a company that goes by the ticker symbol FTCV. I think it's like FinTech Acquisition Corp 5. They're going through a merger right now. They've actually been going through this merger for the last like eight to 10 months or so. And the expected end of the merger, the expected close on the deal was in the fourth quarter of 2021, which is exactly where we are at. So I am hoping that over the next two to four weeks here, we get some type of announcement that this deal has closed because when it does close, we get some more insights into the company and it gets to lock in as eToro, name change, ticker change, everything's gonna change about this company and we're gonna finally get to see what eToro is really about, what the growth rate looks like and what the plan is for the future because what's nice about this is that the stock for FTCV is actually trading at the exact same value as when the deal closed about eight to 10 months ago. And since then, eToro has only grown, they have only gotten better, the metrics have only gotten better. And so I think the opportunity here is that we are now able to get into eToro at the same price as where it was trading at a year ago and the company has only gotten better. So I think the opportunity is even is even greater. I have added to my positions and I anticipate that in the next one to two months at the latest, we're gonna have some type of announcement about the close of that merger and I think that's gonna be a major catalyst for the stock. Now the next company I wanna point out here is Unity Software. This is a software company that I absolutely love. Their revenue growth is amazing. The company management is great. And the stock has been trading at from a low of 76 to a high of 210. And it's basically been trading along this support channel. If you connect the lows over the last basically year here, you can see that we've got a trend line forming. And now the stock has pulled back to the exact same level as this trend line. And if we see a bounce off of this trend line in the bullish direction, that is gonna be an entry for me, that is gonna be a buying signal, and that's where I'm going to enter this stock, probably for the medium to long term. I like the stock because it's probably like half the games you've ever been played have been used or built with Unity software. And I think that's only gonna increase in the future. Stock's down 33% from the all-time highs. I think it ran up here mostly on hype about the metaverse. Now it has come back down to a reasonable level. I think it represents great value. And if you look at the revenue for this company, it is absolutely phenomenal. From 200,000, uh, or sorry, $200 million in the same quarter last year, up to $286 million in this quarter, that represents growth of over 40% year over year. They have a great business model, they have great growth, they have a great management team. And I just think it's a good company that I wanna hold and add to my portfolio. Okay, now the last company I wanna tell you about here is Zentech LTD, ticker symbol Zen, and they trade in Canada on the TSX Venture Exchange. I really like this company and I've made a few videos about them earlier in the year, so you'd really have to go back to find them. I've also interviewed the CEO of the company and I really like what they're doing because they're in the graphene industry and I am super, super bullish on graphene. If you don't know what graphene 
is. It is a single layer of carbon, single atomic layer of carbon, and it has some extremely, extremely unique properties such as 100% conductivity and heat transfer. It's also one of the strongest materials in the world. So lots of great things about graphene. And what Zentech does is they patent and develop intellectual property that they can then license out and distribute. And so I like their business model because they're not in the business of trying to develop graphene at the lowest cost. They're developing the technology around graphene and licensing it out, which is a much, much better business model. So I really like this company and they're also trading along a major, major trend line right here. If you just connect the lows, it's very easy to see. We also have major support at 574. And so I think this is a really crucial level right here because we've got technical support levels. We've also got a trend line and we have a small little pullback here with the market. It looks like we have a great opportunity to buy in on this dip. However, if support fails on both the trend line and the support line right here, that could be a little bit of a concern and that would be a stop loss or that would be kind of my risk level is right below sort of 575 here. If it fell to sort of 550, that's probably where I would get out, but I think this is a great time to enter the stock. Now, if you wanna see what stocks I am buying and selling, when I buy and sell them, then you can enter my Discord chat. That is where I'm posting all of my trades, all of my technical analysis, and I'm trying to build a community of traders to share their analysis, their research, and all of their due diligence so that we're not all sitting at home alone trying to figure out what to do. This is a community that you can join. It is $5 per month, and I also post my weekly watch list in there. Definitely check it out. The link is in the description down below and you also have full access to ask me anything on almost a 24 seven basis. Now, in summary, here is where the market is at. Number one, the market's made a decent recovery last week. We saw some companies run to all time highs like Apple, but we've also seen a lot of growth and tech stocks sell off that aren't quite as popular or as safe as Apple. So definitely something to keep in mind. Inflation was worse than expected. That is a concern for a lot of people right now. And crypto is still bearish at the moment. We did see nice little small recovery in Bitcoin after those inflation numbers. However, Bitcoin is still in a bearish direction until we see some major trend changes. COVID is also being managed right now. I wouldn't say it's good or bad. It's definitely at a manageable level, at least what it seems like a manageable level right now. And Apple is leading the charge. If you don't have Apple in your portfolio, Apple needs to be in your portfolio and it's a great, great stock to own. Trust me, I own a lot. I'm up 25% in the last few months on Apple and I feel really good about giving or I feel really good about putting that on my YouTube channel. Now, here are the trading platforms that I use. I make all my trades on Quest Trade, and if you use the link down below, you get $50 in free commissions. This is great if you want to swing trade or day trade, but if you're looking for a mobile app, that's when Well Simple is good. You get two free stocks if you sign up with them. And then if you want to do crypto, anything with crypto, buy or sell, when you deposit $100, you get a free $25 with Newton. The link is also down below. Now, if you get any value out of this video, remember to click that like and subscribe button. I sincerely appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one. Good luck trading, good luck investing, and we'll talk to you soon.